October 10th. Getting closer to the end of the archery season. So we just came over the ridge and spotted the bulls walking underneath of us. They got tired of getting in the sun, so they're headed to the shade over here, parallel on them. We're gonna see if we can get back on them where they bed. So we spotted these elk. They're on the move fast, so we're trying to hustle, get around in front of them and cut them off. That's basically what we're doing. They're moving fast, so we gotta move fast too. Southwestern Montana, October 10th, or 9th actually. Getting closer to the end of the archery season. And we're out in the sagebrush country. We just spotted two younger bulls, a couple five points. And they're out by themselves, just bedded. They're both real similar bulls, and it looks like it'll be perfect stocking opportunity. So we're just gonna class them up here for a minute, pick our lines, and come around in on behind them and see if we can get one in one. I'd have to check the wind again, but for the upper bowl, if we came around and walked over and got into that little slit and into those trees right behind them there, you'd have a real close shot on them. <laughs> for the slower bowl, I think we go to the rock. So we just came over the ridge and spotted the bulls walking underneath of us. They got tired of getting in the sun, so they're headed to the shade over here, parallel on them. We're gonna see if we can get back on them where they bed.
his body right there, right behind those boulders. Pull down. He's no monster, but you know what? That's part of it. And he's a beautiful bull. I'm happy to take him. Well, here he is. Montana, 2013. Man, just figured archery or nothing. We had a few more days. Dan had some time free up. So we're gonna put in a bunch of time this week. And we actually came down and started hunting some small public pieces laced into some private back in this country and found these two bulls and, and uh, gloves are off man we're not we're not playing around so any nice bull will do and this bull is perfect. Dan and Jordan just wrapped up filming Jordan's Montana elk hunt. Now Dan has just a little bit of time for himself and wants to try and strike while the iron's still hot by punching his own Montana general elk tag. This scenario can be a real exercise in patience and self-control, as you have to just sit there and listen to them bugle. Just remember, too much calling can have the reverse effect and shut a hot bull right down. Dan's elk hunting experience pays off as he uses the rut crazed bull's distraction against them and finds himself right in the middle of a gnarly bull elk showdown. Just would have stopped that opening. The wind finally got them. They're running hard. We could hear them fighting. They're moving this way on the mountain, and we're trying to bring them up from the rear and trying to get on them and in this thick stuff. So we spotted these elk. They're on the move fast, so we're trying to hustle, get around in front of them, and cut them off. That's basically what we're doing. They're moving fast, so we got to move fast too. Well, we spotted some elk on the move. They went over the hill, but they're moving fast, so we dropped our packs up at the top, and we're just hustling down this draw down here and just trying to get in front of these elk as they're moving. They're a couple draws over, so we're gonna keep on working down and uh, hopefully get in front of them where they cross. Sit here and, and hopefully that they'll move down here eventually. 
potential here. Hopefully they'll, they'll move where we can get on them. They're kind of bedded in a bowl. There's no way we can sneak up and get close. So it's just a waiting game now. It's been about an hour and they're just up there milling around and feeding. It's middle of October. The rut's pretty much over for the most part. So they're starting to move. They're starting to get up and feed across the hill above us. They're about 250, 300 yards. So we're gonna use this terrain right here and try and get around and get in front of them. They went over the hill, so we're gonna loop around and try and get in front of them. There's just not enough cover. Even though a cold front is quickly moving in, causing the temperature to drop like a rock, Dan proves that bow hunting is all about patience and fortitude. Well, we've been out here for a little over an hour, and uh, we don't have any other gear. We dropped our packs back by the truck, so we, we have nothing. We've been sitting out here, and it's getting pretty chilly. Hopefully I can draw my bow back. He's up and feeding. He's coming up right below us. It's about go time, so I'm gonna get in position. I just poked a 300 volt. We waited on it for an hour. Two thousand thirteen Montana Bowl. What an amazing season. So many close calls. We finally got this this guy done. Bow season ends in four days. What a great feeling. Awesome animal, big old mature bull, all muddy, redded up, had like 50 cows with him. Got in the wallow today, seven, seven on the right, five on the left, now he broke his third. Just a warrior. What a great way to end 2013 bow season. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Remember, fair chase is the only way to hunt and take trophy big game. We'll see you right here next week with more Eastman's Hunting TV.